Okay, so this is the second video lesson for section 2-4. We talked about writing equations of lines in the last video when we're given two points, or we're given a point and a slope, or a point, or rather a slope and a y-intercept. In this video, I want to talk about writing equations of lines that are either parallel or perpendicular to each other. And we're not going to talk so much about parallel and perpendicular lines the way you did in geometry class, but instead we're going to talk more of a, about them from an algebraic standpoint in terms of the relationships between equations of these types of lines. Okay, make sure you have your notes out as we begin the video, and you have that sheet that I gave you to fill out all the information from this video. First thing we're going to talk about is parallel lines. Okay, I think we all know what parallel lines are from geometry. The important thing that we're going to talk about in this chapter and in this class is the fact that parallel lines have equal slopes. So that's going to be your first blank that you fill in. So we know right off the bat, if we see two equations and their slopes are the same, regardless of how they're going to look on a graph, we know the graphs are going to be parallel to each other. The lines are going to be parallel to each other, I mean. That's going to be useful for us because we might be asked to write equations of lines that are parallel to each other, like the first example on your sheet. The first example says, write the equation of the line that is parallel to the line y equals 5x plus 1 that contains the point negative 2, comma 3. Okay, first thing we see is the slope of that line that's given to us is going to be 5. Okay, we now know the slope of the parallel line has to also be 5 because as we said, parallel lines have equal slopes. So we know the slope, we're given a point, we can use our trusty point slope form from yesterday's lesson to figure out the equation of the line. So there it is again. Again, we're going to make m5 and we're going to use the coordinates negative 2 for x1, 3 for y1, and when we plug it all in, y minus 3 equals 5 times the quantity x minus negative 2. We have another one of those double negatives, so first thing we'll do is make it positive. Then we want to turn into slope-intercept form, so we have to distribute that 5 from the right-hand side. We get y minus 3 equals 5x plus 10. Slope-intercept form means we have to isolate the y, so if we add 3 to both sides, we'll get y equals 5x plus 13. Therefore, that line, if we were to graph it, would contain the point negative 2, 3, and be parallel to the line y equals 5x plus 1. Okay? Let's look at the second example. We want the equation of the line parallel to, ooh, 8y minus 7x equals negative 3 and contains 4, negative 10. Well, this wasn't very nice of the person that wrote this question. We don't quite know what the slope of this line is yet. This equation is in standard form. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to turn 8y minus 7x equals negative 3 into a form that's much more handy for us. And the most handiest form to figure out what the slope of the line would be, is slope-intercept. So first thing I'm going to do is bring over my 7x, and I get 8y equals 7x minus 3. We add 7x to both sides. That gives me 8y by itself, but I want to get y by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by 8. And now in slope-intercept form, that line becomes y equals 7 eighths x minus 3 eighths. Now taking a look at that line, it's in slope-intercept form. The intercept we're going to disregard. Parallel lines will not have the same y-intercept, but they will have the same slope. So the num only number I really need from this equation is the one I just highlighted in yellow, 7 eighths. That's the slope of the first line, which means it's going to be also the slope of the parallel line. So we know the slope is 7 eighths, and the point that we want to use is 4 common negative 10. So... Like we've been doing the last couple days, we're going to use slope intercept for, or point slope form, excuse me, and plug in y minus negative 10 equals 7 eighths quantity x minus 4. Another double negative, y plus 10 equals 7 eighths quantity x minus 7 halves. 
We bring over the 10, and we get y equals 7 eighths x minus 27 over 2. But now, we're not done. The directions say to write the equation in standard form. And if we look here, we've got some fractions, we don't have the variables in the right position, so there's a little bit more algebra we have to do in order to get this done. First thing we want to do is we want to clear out the fractions. And like we've talked about before in class, in order to do that, I want to multiply both sides of this equation by the lowest common multiple, or lowest common denominator, of all the fractions. We have an 8, we have a 2, the smallest multiple of both those numbers is 8. So I'm going to multiply everything in this equation by 8. When I do that, I now get 8y equals 7x minus 108. We're almost done. Now we just have to rearrange some terms to get our x term positive, and x in front of y. I'll bring the 108 to the left, the 8y to the right, a little do -si do like we've done before, and we get 108 equals 7x minus 8y. Okay? You now have two practice problems. I want you to give those a try. So at this point, you can pause the videotape. You can rewind it if you want to look at these problems again or you want to hear my explanations again. Once you've finished the two, we're going to talk about perpendicular lines on the back side. If you have any questions about these problems, like we've done before, we'll go over the answers to them in class tomorrow, and we can bring up any issues that may have come up in solving them tomorrow. Okay? So pause the video now. Okay, so we looked at parallel lines. Now we need to talk about perpendicular lines. Now, their relationship is a little bit different. So there's the symbol for perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines have slopes that have two things in or two things related to each other. They are opposite and they are reciprocals of each other. We talked about both of these words in chapter 1 when we were looking at properties and we were talking about inverses of numbers, additive and multiplicative inverses of numbers. We said opposite numbers have different signs and reciprocal numbers are fractions that are flipped. So a perpendicular line, its slope is going to do both of those things in relationship to the other line it's perpendicular to. Here's what I mean by that. Okay, And again, opposite and reciprocal are what you're going to fill in for those two lines. So here's a pair of perpendicular slopes. One half and negative two. Notice one number is positive, one number is negative. The other one is the reciprocal of the first. Another pair would be negative three-fourths and positive four-thirds. So if you saw two lines that had these two values for their slopes, if you knew nothing else about them, you would know that they had to be perpendicular to each other or form a 90-degree angle, in case you forgot that definition from geometry. Okay, so let's write some equations of perpendicular lines. Example number three says write the equation of the line perpendicular to y equals 4x minus 3, which passes through negative 8 minus 7. Okay. First thing I want to do is I want to look at the equation of the given line, and I want to see what is that slope. We all know, since it's in slope-intercept form, that that equation would be the 4. This time, however, we're not going to use 4. What we have to do is we have to take the opposite and reciprocal of the number 4, and that's going to be our new slope. So the opposite of 4 is negative 4, and the reciprocal of negative 4 is negative 1 fourth. So our new line, our perpendicular line, must have slope of negative 1 fourth. So when I go to point slope form in a couple seconds, that's the value I'm going to put in for m. Not 4, negative 1 fourth. So here we go, point slope, y minus y1 equals m quantity x minus x1. And again, that given point is what we're going to use. You need at least a given point. You can't answer one of these problems if they don't give you at least one point to use. Otherwise, the best you can do is just tell me what the slope of the line would be, but not the specific equation. So we're going to use x as negative 8, and we're going to use y as negative 7, and we're going to plug in y minus negative 7, equals negative one-fourth quantity x minus negative eight. 
And that should be a negative 7 over there on the left. There we go. So we have two double negatives, and we make them positive. y plus 7 equals, and we'll distribute, negative 1 fourth x minus 2. No, we're not done again because the directions say, actually they don't say to put the answer in slope-intercept form, but if they did, we're going to subtract 7 to both sides, and we would get y equals negative 1 fourth x minus 9. All right, one more example. Let's be a little dastardly again. Let's look at an equation that's not in slope-intercept form. We want the equation of the line that is perpendicular to 5x plus 3y equals negative 8, which contains the point negative 9, negative 3. And we're told to put our final answer in slope-intercept form. And again, I'm being mean, and I'm giving you a line that's not in slope-intercept form, but rather standard form. So we've got to do a little work here before we can actually write the perpendicular line equation. First thing we've got to do is take 5x plus 3y equals negative 8, and we've got to turn it into slope-intercept form. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. 3y equals negative 5x minus 8. Then divide through on both sides by 3. Slope-intercept form, y equals negative 5 thirds x minus 8 thirds. So when we look at this equation, the slope is negative 5 thirds. So that means our perpendicular slope will be the opposite and reciprocal of that number. The opposite of negative 5 thirds is positive 5 thirds. Remember, we just change signs to make opposite numbers. And then reciprocal of positive 5 thirds is positive 3 fifths, because we flip the fraction. So now we're talking about a line whose slope is 3 fifths, and we're going to use the given point of negative 9, negative 3 to write that equation. So here we go again, point slope form. Hopefully by this point, that is another equation that you'll have memorized because you'll need it a lot in this chapter to write equations, especially on tests and quizzes. So there it is. We're going to make m three-fifths. We're going to make x1 negative 9. We're going to make y1 negative 3. And here we go. y minus negative 3 equals three-fifths quantity x minus negative 9. I love putting negatives in problems, but they make the algebra a pain. So let's make them positive and positive. Now we're almost done. We've got to turn this into slope-intercept form. So we have y plus 3 equals, we'll distribute, 3 fifths x plus, and we multiplied the numerators to get 27 over 5. Ooh, fractions. Now we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. And we get y equals 3 fifths x. And if you're not a big fan of fractions, just remember that 3 is really 15 over 5, so now we have common denominators to subtract. So 27 over 5 minus 15 over 5 is going to be plus 12 over 5. And there you have it. We now have an equation of a line perpendicular to 5x plus 3y equals negative 8, which passes through negative 9, negative 3. Okay, you have two more problems to do at the bottom of this sheet. Give those a try. We will talk about this tomorrow. We're going to do some activities practicing writing parallel and perpendicular equations. And with that, have a good evening, and I will see you tomorrow.